We're Craig and Kirsty, a British couple who left everything to travel the world in 2020, right before the global pandemic hit. After exploring a few countries in Europe, we're now back in the UK exploring closer to home, before we head off for more international travels soon. Join us as we show you around this corner of the world. So we have arrived at location number two for the day. Barra Fundal Bay. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a lot of fun with me trying to say that. I've called it everything but Barra Fundal Bay. <laughs> <laughs> so location number two for the day is supposed to be one of the UK's most beautiful beaches. We've been here before and we can vouch for that, that it's extremely nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty dramatic to look at the view from above, which is what we're hoping to go and catch before it gets too chilly because we are in the UK after all and although it's summertime it's getting on in the daytime. Yeah so when you arrive um, to go and see Barrafundal Bay you park in a place called Stackpole and it's a little v-shaped valley um, with a, a rocky sort of bay so we're just going to go down and check that out first and then walk about five ten minutes across the Barrafundal. Feels so beautiful and fresh around here so nice. Also here at Stackpole there is a lovely little tea house that you can get refreshments from. Um, I'm not sure, we're here a little bit later, it's nearly six o'clock so maybe that's why it's closed. You can get some lovely snacks and things there. It's a lovely place to come. Also got some benches over here that you can come and relax at. Um, but let's go for a walk down and check out the bay. Last time we came here we snorkeled around there and found loads of little gobies clinging to all the rocks. It was really cute. But today we're here a little bit later in the day so it's a bit chilly and we don't have our wetsuits with us. <laughs> so yeah, we're just going to see it from above the water today. It's just beautiful and so peaceful and calm here too. To get to Barrafundal from Stackpole you have to walk across what is essentially a field but what incredible views of the coastline you get from up here and the geology of the coastline. Apparently Wales has moved 6,000 kilometres in its lifetime which ironically is a lot further than Tidenot Travellers in the last year thanks to the pandemic. <laughs> so yeah there's a Welsh information there for you. It's on the move. It's travelled north as well. Good trivia there. <laughs> I just read it on the sign. <laughs> <laughs> and it said that that's led to a lot of folding and crumpling of the rocks. And it's clear to see down there at Stackpole, so check it out. We're just about to come over the top, where we'll get beautiful views of the bay. I can just about see it. Nestled on the south coast of Pembrokeshire, between Broadhaven and Freshwater East, Barrafundal is regularly listed as one of the top beaches in the world, and on a sunny day could easily be mistaken for somewhere in the Caribbean. Owned by the National Trust, the beach forms part of the South Pembrokeshire Heritage Coast and the Pembrokeshire Coast National Park, 
Access to the beach is only possible by foot along the coast path and includes steep steps. While the remoteness and rugged terrain of the walk means it might not suit everyone, if you do visit you'll be rewarded with views of unspoiled coastline. Backed by sand dunes and with high cliffs on either side, the east facing bay provides natural protection from the elements and an ideal spot to escape to for a beach day, walk or a picnic on the sand. Barrafundal Bay is part of the Stackpole Estate, managed by the National Trust, and there are some beautiful walks around the woodlands and waterway, including the nearby Bosherton Lily Ponds, a wildlife haven famous for its otters, wildfowl and dragonflies. Barrafundal Bay and I just love the way that you come over the headland and there's just this beautiful view and this old wall that runs along just absolutely stunning we would love to be grabbing some kayaks and kayaking out because the bay is really calm beautiful for kayaking paddle boarding and going through those little teeny almost like a mini version of Durdle Door <laughs> over there the arches in the rocks over there but unfortunately it's now into the evening time 7pm so we've got to head off to destination number three for the day but you know we can kind of come here and chill out another day and we've been here before on this beach gorgeous beach to just chill out a nice amount of busy as well UK beaches are usually pretty chock-a-block but yeah this is like summertime now in the UK and this beach while we've been here hasn't been too bad it was so great to see Barrafundal Bay again it's one of our favorite beaches in the UK and what we love about the beaches and the coastline down in this part of the UK is the water is always so clear and there's just loads of nice sandy beaches. So now we're heading back to the car and we're hopefully gonna make it to location number three for the day. We have arrived in Pembroke, the main town in Pembrokeshire, for our last stop of the day. There's a lovely castle here, Pembroke Castle, and we're here to check it out from above. <laughs> check this out, it's stunning. Soon after the Battle of Hastings in 1066, the victorious English Norman invaders looked to Wales, and it was in 1093 that Earl Roger of Montgomery built the first Pembroke Castle. Originally, it was a fairly basic structure, made from just wood and earth, but still the castle stood firm against Welsh counter-attacks. In 1189, William Marshall became Earl of Pembroke, and the castle passed into his hands. Over the next 30 years, he transformed the earth and timber structure into a powerful stone fortification creating most of the structure that remains today. In 1457, whilst the castle belonged to the Tudors, King Henry VII of England was famously born inside the castle walls. In the 15th and 16th centuries, the castle was a place of peace until the outbreak of the English Civil War. Although most of South Wales sided with the King, Pembroke declared for Parliament, and on the 24th of May, 1648, during the Second Civil War, Oliver Cromwell came to Pembroke and took the castle after a seven-week siege. Its three royalist leaders were found guilty of treason and Cromwell ordered the castle to be destroyed. Townspeople were even encouraged to disassemble the fortress and reuse its stone for their purposes. The castle was then abandoned and allowed to decay. It remained in ruins until 1880, when a three-year restoration project was undertaken. Nothing further was done until 1928 when Major General Sir Ivor Phillips acquired the castle and began an extensive restoration of the castle's walls, gatehouses and towers. 
After his death, a trust was set up for the castle, jointly managed by the Phillips family and Pembroke Town Council, who still manage it today. The castle is open to the public and is the largest privately owned castle in Wales. Thank you so much for watching today. We really appreciate it. We hope you've enjoyed the places we've explored today. Um, let us know if there's any other amazing places nearby that we should have seen, any other castles, any other beaches that you particularly like. And we will continue with our UK tour next time. And don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed seeing this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you on the next one. See you next time. Bye. Bye. next time as we hike from St Ives to Zena along the southwest coastal path. The views are incredible but we unexpectedly encounter a big problem. If you can't wait that long head over to our Instagram at Tide Not Travelers for daily updates on what we're currently up to and what's coming up in our future videos. Flies <laughs> just landed on the, on the GoPro. <laughs> but yeah, and it said that's led to a lot of uh, a lot of fault <laughs> and it said that that's led to a lot of folding and crumpling of the rocks. Oliver Cromwell came to Pembroke and took the castle after a seven week siege. Its three royalist leaders were found guilty of treason and Cromwell ordered the castle to be destroyed. Townspeople were evened in the blah blah blah.